hey, did you know you can use the stars to navigate without any instruments? Really? I use the map on my phone to move around to see which direction I'm headed. Before that, people use maps and compasses and the sextant. That's a tool used for celestial navigation. Yep, that's all true. But this technology was not always around. Before the GPS on your phone, or even the sextant, people learned to navigate the world by the sky. I've been reading about the Polynesian Voyaging Society and the Canoe Hokulea, which is a recreation of the ancient sailing canoes the Polynesians used several thousand years ago to voyage hundreds of thousands of miles across the Pacific Ocean based on their recognition of the sun, stars, winds, ocean currents, cloud formations, and even bird life. Hokulea, the voyaging canoe, is named after Hawaii's zenith star. It's also known as Arcturus. Let's start at the beginning of the story. Archaeologists have traced the expansion of the Pacific with a radiocarbon dating of pottery and trace it back to the Lapita people of the Bismarck Archipelago in Micronesia. The Lapita pottery is found everywhere on the western edge of Polynesia, from the Solomon Islands to Samoa. The Lapita settlements are found almost simultaneously around 1000 BC with no predated artifacts. These were the first people to sail over the horizon to islands that were too far away to see, and the first to reach the Polynesian Triangle. The points on the Polynesian Triangle go from New Zealand, to Hawaii, to Easter Island. Wow, that's about half the world. So how did they navigate all that distance by the stars so long ago? Let's envision a star compass. Knowing from this location that the sun sets behind the 26 meter radio telescope, let's face that direction. So that's roughly west. So to the right is north, to the left is south, and then behind us is east. If you went to Polynesia, they would refer to direction in relation to local geography. Like Makua means towards the mountain, and Makai means towards the sea. So the circle is a horizon, the meeting point of the sky and earth. So look around you here. The horizon is where the hills and the buildings meet the sky. And from a boat in the ocean, you'd see the horizon as the meeting point of the ocean and sky, 360 degrees around. The compass is divided into houses, giving an arc on the horizon where the stars are found. The circle is dotted with points marking the rising and setting points of particular stars. When a navigator imagines himself at the center of the circle, and his destination as a point on the horizon, the star compass becomes a plotting diagram, giving the bearing of his target island in terms of the rising and setting points of particular stars. The stars rise and set in parallel. A star that rises in the northeast horizon travels across the sky in an arc and sets in the northwest horizon, <laughs> while a star that rises in the southeast horizon travels across the sky and sets in the southwest horizon. The wayfinders would memorize hundreds of these star paths as well as memorize the ocean swells. The swell passes under the canoe like this. The trade winds set in motion a steady beat of ocean swells. Some swells are stirred by local storms that are only a trained navigator can see and feel. Did the Hokulea crew use this star compass to navigate? They learned from it, yes. Master navigator Nainoa Thompson developed the Hawaiian star compass, but this knowledge was almost lost before it could be passed on to him. 
when the Polynesian Wayfinding Society was looking for celestial navigators, none were still alive in Polynesia. They were able to find a wayfinder still alive named Mao Pialug from the island called Sotawal in Micronesia, willing to share his knowledge. He also had a version of the star compass to teach. Mao successfully navigated the first voyage of Hokulea in May 1976 from Hawaii to Tahiti. He later trained Nanoa how to navigate. Nanoa also spent countless hours inside the Bishop Museum in Honolulu to memorize the stars. Let's go to the planetarium here at Perry and see what this would look like under the night sky. And here's Melanie, an astronomer here at Perry. Melanie, could you show Stephen and I how the night sky would look on Hukulea's first journey from the northern hemisphere to the southern hemisphere, from Hawaii to Tahiti? Sure, let's do that. Here's the night sky over Hawaii. We can see some important stars for navigating from here, including Polaris, the North Star, which sits almost on top of True North. It is the last star in the handle of the Little Dipper. And if we look south, we can see the constellation Crux, the Southern Cross, just above the horizon. Now, Hokulea chose to leave on May 1st because it's a time with no hurricanes. Leaving Hawaii, the navigator Mao steered east-southeast toward the rising point of Antares a red giant of a star in the constellation Scorpius, known to Polynesians as the fishhook of Maui. From this point, Mao remained alert, watching the sky and sea, and continuing on this path for a month. As we keep moving south, the constellation of Crux moves higher and higher in the sky. This was relied on as a reference point by the wayfinders since the North Star Polaris is no longer visible when we cross the equator into the southern hemisphere. Cool! This course will take the canoe to a 400 mile wide box of many islands, and from finding one of those islands, they can then find Tahiti. Hey, but doesn't the sky change over time? The stars don't always rise and set in the same place, and the constellations change with the seasons. You're right! Even our sun doesn't rise and set in the same place each day. In general, it rises in the east and sets in the west, but because of Earth's axial tilt, it only rises in true east and sets in true west at the equator, twice a year, on the equinoxes. Over thousands of years, the slow wobble of the Earth's axis, its precession, has changed the way that we see the stars too. Actually, let's look at the night sky 3,000 years ago, when the Lapita people were making their way across the Pacific. The sky looked pretty different. In the northern hemisphere, Polaris, the North Star, which now is essentially stationary, had been rising and setting, while the Southern Cross, which today can't be seen anywhere north of Miami, was much higher in the sky. The world is always changing. Wow, that's so cool. It makes me want to memorize the star paths of the Polynesian wayfinders. But what if it's cloudy at night and you can't see the stars? Or what about during the day? How would you navigate them? That's when navigators would rely on other clues from nature. They would feel the wind and waves and steer by the swells. They could follow birds, like terns and noddies that would return to their islands at night. Booby birds can be spotted up to 50 miles from land. And clouds were also references, as they move more slowly over islands as if stuck, and then speed up once past them. Together, all these natural landmarks help them explore the entire Polynesian Triangle. And Hokulea has used these ancient methods and has successfully navigated the whole world.